Hey guys, what's up? My name is Alec Torelli, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top five ways for how to prepare for the World Series of Poker. Now, I've been lucky to play in many World Series events. Uh, it's crazy to reflect back on the fact that half my life has now been dedicated towards poker. I'm 32, I started playing when I was 16, and I've had some World Series where things have gone great, some where things have gone very poorly. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top five ways for how to prepare for the World Series of Poker. But if you want more content, click the link below. There's an awesome blog post where I go into detail about a lot of the things that I don't have time to share here about this post. For now, let's get started. Number five is to have a plan. You know, when I first started going to the World Series when I was 21, 22, 23, I just kind of went about it. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't really pick out events that I wanted to play, and I didn't really have a clear focus. So every day I had to make all these different decisions about like, should I play this event? Should I do this? There's a cash game. Should I go out and party? Should I have fun and meet up with friends? Or should I go to this event uh, or whatever it is? And so I was just distracted all the time, and I didn't have a very clear focus, which made it difficult to sort of navigate. Now what I do is the complete opposite, and I actually calendar out exactly what events I wanna play ahead of time. I calendar out a lot of like appointments that I have. I'm more busy now, I'm coaching poker, I have interviews and press and things going on at the World Series, but everything is on the calendar. So I make sure that when I have an event that I wanna play, it's a primary focus for that time, and I block out that time and nothing else is on my plate. I also calendar out times for fun. Like I go there with my wife and I wanna have things that I'm gonna do that are entertaining. So, okay, on this day we have off, let's you know go see a show or let's go to dinner and do that. So the reason I think having a plan is important is because if you're anything like me, many of you wanna have do a lot of different things while you're out there. You wanna play cash games, you wanna play tournaments, you wanna meet up with friends, you wanna go out and have a good time. And it's about, you know, more than just playing the event and playing your best, but it's also about finding a balance and making your trip to the World Series Poker a memorable one and an awesome experience. And planning ahead is the best way to do that. So map out your ideal schedule. You know, figure out how many tournaments you wanna play. How many hours of cash games do you wanna play? Like how many sessions or how many hours of cash do you wanna get in? And then, you know, reverse engineer from there. Okay, you block out that time. What is the rest of your time gonna look like? Now, obviously, you know, you have to be able to audible. Some days I get up and I'm not feeling like playing or there's, I remember a couple of years ago, I was playing the main event and on the day off, you know, if you play day one, you have day one B off, there was a super high stakes cash game. And so I ended up playing until the day of the main event day two and I just literally didn't sleep all night and I played in this high stakes cash game because the EV was bigger than the main event for me. So like <laughs> there are things like, I mean, that's a random example, but there are things that come up where you're going to change your plans. But I think having a plan is a great place to start. Okay, number four is manage your bankroll. So once you've mapped out your schedule, you know, okay, I wanna play these tournaments and I wanna play you know this many hours of cash games and these are my costs for going. Then it's about dividing your bankroll into three categories. Now I go through an example of this on the blog, but most people think, you know, okay, my bankroll, let's say, you know, my bankroll for poker is 50K. It doesn't matter if it's 5K or 500K, but let's just throw out a number 50 for illustration purposes. And most people think, okay, my bankroll is 50K, I'm gonna play, you know, cash games relative to that bankroll or tournaments relative to that bankroll. But what I actually encourage my, my clients to do is to divide their bankroll into three different categories. One for tournaments, one for cash games, and one for expenses. And in this way, you could actually budget your playing, you know, what stakes you play based on your bankroll for those specific categories. And you wanna divide your bankroll based on your focus. So if you're mainly a cash game player, maybe you want 75% of your bankroll in cash games, 20% in tournaments, and 5% for expenses. Then you could actually figure out what games to play based on that bankroll. Now, top professionals will all tell you that you could be the best player in the world, but if you don't manage your money correctly, you will end up broke. And perhaps nowhere is that more true than Vegas during the summer when there's the World Series of Poker, because there is just so many opportunities to play poker in different games. There's so many opportunities to make bad decisions where you just go on a bender and just play all night and dust off a huge amount of money because of tilt, or you just get up the next day and jump into a tournament that you're not properly rolled for. And again, this kind of goes back to having a plan. If you, if you take emotion out of the situation and you methodically plan out what games you can afford to play based on what your bankroll is and what your priorities are, you're gonna be a lot more prone to stick to that plan. 
right? So failure to plan is planning to fail. You've all heard that adage. And, and, and to some extent in poker, especially when there's a lot of emotion involved, I find that having that plan and really structuring your bankroll around what your priorities are is a great place to start. Number three is to commit to being healthy during the World Series. There's no secret that you know the way you're going to perform, feel, and, and think cl- clearly at the event is, is correlated on your, your habits and surrounded on health. So it's really important, especially if you're playing, I mean, let's be honest, you're playing 13-hour days. Just take you know, a random tournament. It doesn't have to be the main event. You're playing 13-hour days three days in a row. So that's you know, 30, 39, 40 hours of poker. Uh, in three days and every single decision you make is more important than the last one because you're progressing in the tournament so it's actually you know it's actually more important to be mentally sharp in the 10th hour of day one than the first hour because the stakes are higher the decisions are bigger other people are tired you have better reason on your opponents but this is only contingent on your ability to stay focused and so there are three things that are kind of the pillars of health for me and that's diet uh, exercise and meditation. So I'll walk you through each and, and how I kind of go about these to prepare and be in the best state of mind and shape possible for the main event. So the first one's diet. There's, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet, but there are some basic things that are just universally wise to adapt, a- adopt as habits, especially if you want to think clearly. So I've noticed for me, like I've experimented with a lot of things. I've noticed for me personally, like the way that I feel is the biggest in, in the biggest factor in the way that I feel is is what I eat. So if I do everything else right, if I you know exercise and meditate and take cold showers or whatever, but I eat like crap, I'm still going to feel bad. Whereas if I eat amazing and I skip all the other things, I could still perform very very well. So I think you know if there's one thing you take to the bank, let it be the diet thing, and you know just do the common sense diet like replace fried processed food with natural (laughs) whole foods eat until you're 80 percent full the japanese have an adage about this that is a confucian saying um i forgot what exactly what they say but it's basically they eat until they're 80 percent full this is a huge one so not having to digest a lot of food and process food at the table especially when you're sitting for a long period of time is huge because when your body has to work to digest food you end up being tired so eating heavy meals is a terrible terrible idea at the poker table. So eating light and always being a little bit hungry for me works absolute wonders. Uh, Eating high quality foods makes sense. Stay hydrated. I drink like three to four liters of water a day. For me, that's really, really important. And the last one is one that I find personally is really important for me. And it also depends on your body type. Uh, So definitely experiment with with what works for you. You could actually do, if you want to get really next level, you can do like uh, sort of genetic testing to figure out your Uh, ability to tolerate different things like caffeine, which is the last one I wanted to talk about. So for me personally, I noticed that like, if I have a lot of caffeine and I feel like a lot of people rely on caffeine to stay focused on the table and it's not a bad idea in the short term. So like, look, if I'm going to go there and play the main event and it's day six, day seven, I'm going to be pushing myself to the limit and just kind of like focusing on the short term and maybe being, you know, using caffeine as a crutch. But if you're there for the long haul and you're playing long hours of cash game sessions and tournament sessions, relying on caffeine is not a great idea. So the half-life of something like coffee, meaning the point in which you feel half of the effect, is five to six hours. So that's just the half-life. So if you're taking coffee at 5 p.m., you know, really powerful stimulant like coffee at 5 p.m., you're going to have 50% of that in your system at 10 p.m. And if you're trying to go to bed at midnight and then get up early, you're not going to be able to sleep properly, especially if it's going to screw up your rhythm. So I would definitely experiment with what works for you. Maybe switch to something more sustainable like green tea or limit caffeine after lunch. All works really well for me. I find personally that I can't drink coffee every single day. It's very powerful for me. I feel the effects a lot, but I actually have specific days where I take zero caffeine. So um, days that I don't play poker, for example, at the main event, I will play, I will take zero caffeine and that way on days that I actually play, I can feel the effects and have that extra, you know, 10%, 15% buzz, um, that that's going to give me that extra edge. So the second thing is exercise. Um, for me, I've experimented a lot with what works. I actually, uh, worked with all American Dave, gave me an amazing exercise program. And one of the pillars of that was interval training. And I've really, I feel like augmented that practice that I learned um, in my own life and, and really applied it to poker to get the most out of it. So hit training or high intensity interval training is basically the idea that you get your heart rate up for a short period of time and then bring it back down. 
And the reason why I find this so effective is, I mean, obviously it's, it's one of the great ways to train cardiovascularly and it burns the most fat and all those things, but specifically for poker, not just talking about like being in great shape, but for poker, it actually mimics in-game play. So it, it gives you a lot of stamina, which is important for long, arduous days like you're gonna find in the World Series, but it also, it also mimics in-game play. So if you think about what you're actually doing at the table mentally, you're focusing for a minute while you're playing a hand of poker, and then you're resting when you're not playing the next hand. And so the interval training is, is kind of a metaphor for what you're doing at the table. And what I like to do is actually use the intervals as mental training, more than the physical side of things. So if you're just doing it for the physical benefits, great. But if you really want that next level, I feel like there's more to your workout that could be had than just pushing yourself for a minute and resting. So what I do during the pushes is I'll actually, you know, imagine myself playing the main event and, and playing at the final table and making great decisions or correcting mistakes from my previous session. And I'll be in the zone for that minute. So while I'm sprinting my ass off on the treadmill or running down the streets of uh, Manhattan where I am now, whatever I'm doing, I'm pushing myself hard for a minute while I'm sort of visualizing how I want to perform act and be. And then when I'm resting, I'm kind of not in the hand, so to speak, so I'm resting. And so I use these intervals as mental training as much as physical training. Um, and a great way to do them is just simply go on a treadmill, warm up for three minutes, set the incline to 10.0, uh, walk at 4.0 miles per hour for a minute, and then rest, walk at 2.5 miles per hour for a minute. If you're really next level, do it for like 75 seconds and 45 seconds, or 90 seconds and 30 seconds. So always shortening the interval time, doing like a one-to-one -one ratio is Inter, like beginner level, doing two to one level is, is next level. It's called Tabata. It's it's awesome. So if you really can work up to that, I recommend progressing to that level. Basically do that 10 times. Do 10 intervals, three minute cool down. You're done in 25 minutes. You're going to feel amazing. Uh, another great app to use for this. I know a lot of you love apps and ask me about this. Uh, I use Peloton for outdoor runs. They have elliptical training and bikes. They have actually an uh, indoor bike you can buy that's stationary. It's incredible. Uh, and that's a great way to do get your interval training in. But Peloton Outdoor is amazing for runs. You can go on 20 minute runs, do your intervals. And I do that pretty much every day when I wake up. So the third thing I like to do for to be like in the best state of mind possible is meditation. There's thousands of articles on the science behind it. But what I find really works well for poker is just it doesn't have to be fancy. Meditation has this like connotation to it where you're supposed to be like a Zen Buddha and think about nothing and touch the ground when you're enlightened, but really it could just be something as simple as sitting with your eyes closed for 10 minutes before a session and setting an intention for how you wanna play. What are you gonna focus on? What are you gonna work on? Or visualizing um, how you're gonna play that day or the results you wanna have. But if you really want that next level, which I'm always looking for, I highly recommend the app Primed Mind. You can click the link below and download it. And that app is awesome. They have a uh, renowned hypnotist, Elliot Rowe, who does a combination of visualization, hypnotherapy, and like kind of like life goals to really help you achieve the results you want specific to poker. So made by Fedor Holtz, one of the best tournament players of all time. Uh, it's really engineered for poker players. So they have things like a winning mindset course and they have a specific package for the World Series of Poker. So they actually have specific World Series of Poker trainings that I'm doing now and I'm gonna continue to do before the main that kind of get you like primed, no pun in well, pun intended, to play your best during the World Series. And I find that that really helps because a lot of it is like your mindset and your intention and how focused you are. And I've noticed that, you know, summers where I played a lot of events, I felt burnt out. By the time I got to the main event, I just didn't really want to be there mentally and I ended up playing bad as a result. So you all know there's a huge difference between your A game and your C game. And so part of being a better poker player is consistency. And you'll look at the best in the world in any sport, they have great A games. But what separates them from the rest is they're more consistent. And being in the right state of mind mentally really allows me to be consistent as often as possible and really reach that next level. So check out Primed. You can click there. Um, you can click the link below and get access to it. It's really, really awesome stuff. Tip number two is to create a support group. So I was lucky. People always ask me, like, did you ever coach or how did you learn poker? You know, I was lucky to come up at a time in poker where a lot of the people that maybe coincidentally, maybe not, are, are you know at the top of the game today were people that I just came up with. And so I met these people at various tournaments. Like the first time I went to the Bahamas, it's 2005, I was 18 years old. I met Tom Dewan and Andrew Robel. And so I became fast friends with them. And Robel's you know, one of my best friends in poker for the last decade. 
uh, and you know Tom, I traveled around with him as well, and so I got to learn from like in, amongst a lot of other people, but two household names, so to speak. Uh, I got to learn from these people, and so it made me realize the power of having a support group and a, and a group of people that you know you could put on a, a, a you know a WhatsApp chat or a text chat, and you could send hands to each other. So it's it's huge because you have objective people that have you know equal or better talent sometimes worse talent, but they're, they're looking at your game and it's always easier to solve someone else's problem than it is to solve your own. Have you ever noticed that when your friend asks you for advice, it's so obvious to you what they should do, but sometimes it's hard to figure out your own shit. Well, it's kind of the same way in, in a poker hand where it's like your friend or your colleagues or your peers aren't attached to the results. So if you put yourself in this group, um, it's really going to help you be able to improve your game and actually think objectively about things about the hands or just about preparing for the world series or whatever it is and so there's a few rules to the group that i think are really important number one is you can have absolutely no bad beats right all the time that's put into the group has to be putting your attention on what you can control which is how you play the hand and the merit of your decisions and forgetting about the rest and the second rule is you have to have radical honesty you have to have everyone be willing to give constructive criticism, share their opinions, and have no negative ramifications for that, because otherwise you're, you're gonna limit improvement. So find a group of people that'll allow you to do that and really connect with them and plug in, and that's an awesome way to improve. That's one of the reasons at Conscious Poker we created our membership, because so many people were asking, like, how do you plug into a group of like-minded people? And so we created a membership for that, where you can actually connect with a lot of other people in, in our private closed group and you could share hands and strategies. It's moderated by myself and a conscious poker coach. So we actually give feedback to the players who submit their hands. So it's kind of like creating that little group format. So if that's something you're interested in and you don't have that support group, click the link below and you can learn more about the membership. Finally, tip number one, the most important thing in my opinion to do to prepare for the world series is to improve your game. Like the other things we talked about are more about how to be better as a poker player, whereas this one is how to be better at playing poker, right? You can do all the first four and you could go there and be laser sharp in your diet and manage your bankroll and be in super sick shape and have your six pack and have a support group. But if you suck at poker, <laughs> you're not gonna win, right? Unless you get super lucky, but you're not gonna put yourself in the best position to win. So, you know, the first four were about better being a better poker player. This one's about playing better poker and that's just improving your game. So. There are many ways to do that. You can watch, obviously, YouTube videos. There's some free content out there. Uh, but I put together an exercise that is free. I made a video on this called The Best Way to Study Poker. There's a blog uh, on that which shows you exactly how I study poker in the lab. It's a very good intro level exercise. And it's a simple exercise you could do in 10 minutes or less to improve your game, like running numbers through a lab. And it's an insight into what the pros are doing. And this is I think important because a lot of times when people tell me like, oh, I watch, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to improve at poker. I watch a lot of videos and stuff. Those things can help, but a lot of it is almost more passive and more entertainment than it is proactive, active, and actually taking something tangible and implementing it into your game. So that exercise is great to do, and I highly recommend it. Uh, lastly, if you want kind of that next level or membership at Conscious Poker, we put that together and that's really awesome stuff. We have 90 plus videos. We have videos specifically on tournament strategy. You can filter by like every single type of content you want. So if you want to learn specifically about final table play or deep stack play in the early stages of tournaments, we have a little filter feature. You can click and look in whatever video you want. Um, we also have mini courses about various poker subjects to help you with hand reading or mastering the math of poker and all these sorts of things, uh, as well as group coaching calls where <clears throat> the last one we did, or a couple calls ago, we did a group coaching call, which was specifically about tournament strategy. We talk about final table strategy, ICM, all the important things you need to know. I host all those calls, so there's a chance to have group coaching with me and interact with me and ask me any questions you have as well. So that's kind of like that next level thing if you're looking to make an investment in your game or investment in yourself and, and really improve at poker to give yourself the best strategy possible. So I hope these tips helped. Let me know which one is your favorite. Um, if you want specifics on all of this stuff, check the link below at the blog post. I, I share things like specifically the snacks that I bring to the table and I hyperlink all of those. So if you're looking for like exactly all the little details, highly recommend you check that out. Subscribe to my channel, more awesome content coming your way. Thank you for your time and attention and I'll see you at the final table. Cheers.